Hey YouTube, this is Alex from CHQ Store. Today I'll be doing a video of an unboxing and a review of the Cooler Master Test Bench version 2.0. This is the box that it comes in. As you can see, it has been opened. Um, this is the second take I'm doing on this video. The first take I did the, uh, the whole video and realized I forgot the audio. I had the wrong microphone turned on. So, oops. Anyway, take two, here we go. So the box has already been opened. I put everything back exactly how it was. Um, and anyway, as you see, it comes in a really plain box, brown box. Um, there's some labels on the outside. Uh, let's see if we can get that in focus there. So it says CL-001-KKN2-GP. Uh, now if you Google that part number, you probably won't see a whole lot. If you Google uh, test bench version 2.0, you probably also won't see a whole lot. And I'm not sure exactly why that is, uh, but Cooler, I do a lot of business with, with Cooler Master and uh, they approached me with I think they had 30 of these and they were on liquidation. So I'm thinking that maybe they released the product and then maybe they changed their minds or something like that. Uh, but anyway, we, we use test benches here uh, for work and we sell computer equipment and hardware. So we figured we'll use some, we'll sell some. And uh, yeah, so let's talk about the device. Um, first, I wanna show you that uh, we have bought other similar devices before, other maybe cases, benches, whatever you want to call them. Um, and this was by far, I've again, I, I've opened it once, so I've played with it a little bit because I did the review already once. This is my second time reviewing it. Uh, and it's better than everything else I've seen. Um, I'm not saying it's the best. There's probably some things I have not seen, but as far as a cheap test bench goes, uh, I like this one a lot, and I'll tell you why. Um, so let's unbox it. So you can just act like, uh, just pretend I'm using a knife right now and cutting it, okay guys? Oh wow, that's fast. So it comes with the inserts here, the foam inserts that hold it in place. This is great because as you know, UPS, FedEx, everyone, they kick the boxes around and break everything and this isn't going to get broken when it shows up at your door with these inserts. Um, so let's take it out. So we've got this, we've got a bag with uh, the screws and things like that. I'm going to put that down. Let's take these corners off. And we've got a bag here. Take the bag off. And here's our case, test bench case, whatever you want to call it. Very plain, very basic. It's, uh, it's aluminum um, or steel. It, anyway, it's metal very very sturdy it comes like this this is how it comes in the box there's no building that you have to do which is really really nice especially if if you're buying this for your workplace or you're just doing some testing you just want to get the test done I don't know about you guys I don't know if you bought other test benches but some of them take literally like an hour to put together tons and tons of pieces um, basically kind of assembling like a Legos but a Legos kit without the fun factor so anyway, uh, this is ready to go. Um, this has uh, the power button and the reset button here on the front. So we can get a better angle there. Green for power, red for reset. Sorry about the focus is really bad there, but anyway, you get the idea. So you've got the cables in there. They're tied down. You can connect those to your motherboard. Um, and then you have all of the screw patterns on the top here for the risers uh, for pretty much every pattern you could think of. Um, you know, ATX, micro ATX, ITX, blah, blah, blah. It pretty much supports almost everything. Uh, you've got hard drive cage support inside. You've got power supply support inside. Um, and it's really basic. It also has these rubber feet on the bottom. And I really like these. Um, see if I can get a little bit closer here on the camera. So you can see that it is rubber. And I've had some other test benches that don't have feet like this and even fall apart when you try to scoot them around on the desk because of the way that they are built. And this thing is just not going to fall apart and it's really sturdy and if you have it on a table uh, with a bunch of other expensive equipment and someone bumped it uh, this isn't going anywhere it's going to stay in place um, anyway so 
let's put a motherboard on it, see how it looks. Um, so I told you I've done this once before, but I do want to tell you that last time I put these, I'm going to use the, I don't know what they're called. I think they're called like quick standoffs or something like that. Um, so I'm going to be using these guys right here. And so I should, I should probably hold in the middle so you can see. So this side on the top, this side goes down into the case part. And this side I have here on the bottom, I should probably flip this. <laughs> this side with the, the taller side, that goes through your motherboard hole. And then this side right here, as I said, is going to go into the case. There are nine of them included, which is pretty standard for most ATX motherboards. Some ATX motherboards take 10, uh, have 10 holes, but it doesn't matter. You don't need to have every spot. These are plastic. They're not metal. So you're not grounding the, case, the motherboard out or hurting your motherboard anyway. It's just being suspended by plastic. So um, anyway, I'm going to be using these. Um, I actually don't know why anyone wouldn't use these. There's, in the comments, go ahead and write a reason why you wouldn't want to use these, but they're amazing in my opinion. I've never seen them before, um, and I wish that a lot of other cases had these. So, well, they're too tall for, for a normal case, but it would be cool if there was a case that supported it from the box. Um, so, anyway, I'm going to take all these out of the bag, all nine of them. Um, So we got all nine out. The rest of it, what's in the bag is just mostly screws, you know, things to hold the power supply probably together. Uh, there are the taller um, standoffs, like the, the brass ones that are kind of more common, but they're taller than a regular brass standoff. Um, and I'm not gonna be using those. So I know I just said this, like I've said this three times. I've done this before. So you're gonna think, wow, he did that really fast, but I did it really fast the first time, the first try. So, you know, we just take these guys, these little plastic standoffs, and I'm just going to do the ATX pattern. If you're kind of uh, new to this kind of stuff and you're thinking, well, how do I know where, which hole to put into, get your motherboard out and use that as your template. Um, that's always a safe way to do it. But, you know, if you're just, if you do this a lot, you already know kind of what a standard ATX pattern looks like and you don't really need to check that. So these things just pop in. I mean, it's that simple. They're a little bit harder to take out, but they're not so hard where it's a chore. Because I, I did take them out, and I mean, well, I'll take one out for you so you can see. So let's just take this one. Yeah, that was it was that easy. Just popped right out. But um, so that's completely ready to go for a motherboard. It was that fast. So you know, literally, we open the box, we get the stands in, and you could have done that. You could have opened the box, put the standoffs in within basically one minute. Um, so now I'm going to grab a motherboard. I've got a, uh, a factory refurbished uh, Asus. Uh, let's see if you can see that here. I'm trying to get the focus. Come on, focus. It's a Crosshair 6 Extreme, basically, which is the most high-end X370 board that Asus made. Um, so there's probably a Crosshair 7 now because X470 came out. But this is a really awesome board. Super heavy. This is the Class A version. Asus sells Class A and Class B for refurbished equipment. Class A means it comes with, you know, all these goodies that I'll show you. SATA cables and Wi-Fi antennas and, you know, slide bridges and user manual, blah, 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 blah. IO shield. Um, whereas if you get a, a B-Class motherboard, it means it doesn't come with anything. Uh, there's no SATA cable. There's, no, there's not even an IO shield. Um, it's just the board. That's all there is is the motherboard. And we sell we sell both A and B, and uh, a lot of people love both for both. You know, Bs are cheaper, so people love cheap, and As have everything in them, so they love that too. So anyway, this is a really awesome board. It's really, really, really heavy. Um, here, I'll have to go this way. Lots of shielding. Uh, yeah, I know I'm not grounded right now, but stop getting triggered. Um, so. I also wanted to mention that this one we took the back plate off of, uh, as you can see right here in the front and in the back. We took the back plate off because we were uh, we were doing some water cooling testing on it, so we had a different back plate connected to it. Um, anyway, the one thing that's really cool about this motherboard is it has a built-in I/O shield. You see that? Like, there's no need for an I/O shield. So as I said, this is a Class A, and there's no I/O shield in the box because you never need an I/O shield. It's that is like, I don't know if you want to say soldered on or built into the actual um, shroud right here. It's pretty cool. Um, 
Really good looking motherboard. Probably one of the best motherboards I've ever seen. Anyway, I'll stop talking about the motherboard. Let's talk about the case. So, let's get this thing mounted up. Really easy. Oh, sorry, I have it backwards. So, we just line up the holes. Looks like I got one in the middle. That's off. And push down. Yeah, so these are, I want to remind you guys, these clips have been used already once, at least once, right? Because I did this once before, so they're, they've, there's a little bit of wear on them. And, uh, and that's important for you to know if you're buying this to be using it as a, uh, the device that you're going to be swapping motherboards in and out of all the time. Like, oh, you know, like how good are those plastic clips? Are they just going to break? Um, use it once and it's done. Well, I don't think so. And the way I'm going to show you that is I'm going to put it upside down. So that is upside down with one of the heaviest motherboards that I've ever felt in my life. And I've felt a lot of motherboards. So, uh, yeah, it's it's really, really sturdy. This is great for testing. Um, so, you know, I, if I was going to continue, which I will be con I will be using this for some testing we're going to be doing. We're going to be testing a lot of AM4 um, processors and different video card combinations and kind of come up with what we think is the best bang for the buck on the AM4 platform for budget builds, you know, in the $300, $400, $500 range. So we'll be using things like uh, this right here is a, let's see if I can focus, yeah, A6-9500. This is the cheapest AM4 processor on the market right now. It's like 50 bucks for a brand new box like this with the heat sink inside. Um, and we'll be doing, uh, we'll be also testing the A10-9700. Um, we'll be testing uh, the Athlon X4-950. Uh, and then we've got, this right here is a, um, if I can hold it correctly, this is a Ryzen 2200G, which I don't know if the focus is going to be able to catch that. Uh, sorry, I'm wasting your time I'm trying to show you. There we go. I shot it for a second. Anyway, Ryzen 3 2200G. Uh, we'll be doing a 2400G. Um, so we'll be looking at a bunch of different options. We'll be using this as our uh, test bench to d test all that stuff. And uh, anyway, stay tuned for those videos. Those should be coming pretty soon. We're going to be putting out a lot of content. Um, so let's move on to talking about this test bench in the competition. So um, I'm going to change the camera view so that you can see my screen here. And I'm going to jump on Amazon and uh, just show you some of the, the test benches. Let me make sure I've got the camera in a good spot so that you guys can see my screen well enough. All right, so I'm on Amazon. Uh, this is the Cooler Master Mini Test Bench, which is the same case that we're selling. Um, if you go online, pretty much you only see the version 1.0. You won't see the 2.0. There's no difference other than, uh, let's see if I can get this picture big enough. Um, the 1.0 had some graphics that said Cooler Master and some weird stuff in lab. I don't know why that's there it's on that one it's not on this one that we have here the version 2.0 doesn't say lab doesn't matter it's the same product basically so this sells uh for 69.99 with free shipping on amazon um if you look at some here's some of the other things so this is the diy pc brand the model is called the alpha db6 um this is a black acrylic test bench and they don't show a picture of how it comes shipped but it comes shipped uh broken down in a bunch of little pieces so this is kind of like one of those Lego projects I was talking about earlier where there's actually a lot of time required to put it together and it's very flimsy. Um, I don't like it. We have four of them out in the warehouse that we use for video card testing benches. Um, I would have been using these Cooler Masters if I would have had um, if I would have had them in stock at the time that we needed test benches, but we didn't. So I just went on Amazon and they were cheap. I grabbed them. They work. They do the job, but they're they're not that great. Um, so this picture right here, I'll try to make a little bit bigger. You can see these little metal screws that pop up. And for video card testing, for us, these things are worthless. They're such a waste of time. Um, we'd rather just have them not even there and put the video card free floating inside of the motherboard PCI Express, uh, sorry, PCI Express slot 
those hold the video cards up fine even if it's a huge 1080 ti um we've had no problems with that so anyway this is 50, uh, 50 bucks free shipping so that is cheaper uh, but it's plastic and particle board and anyway i'm i've already told you i don't recommend it um this is the same brand diy pc this is the alpha gt3 we also had one of these it is better than the uh, DB6 that was right here. Uh, it's a little bigger, it's taller, um, and it ships in a similar fashion where all the pieces are broken down flat, and it is a bunch of pieces, and it does take a little while to put it together, um, even for people that are experienced in computer building, and it's another Lego project in a way. Um, and yeah, we didn't like it a whole lot, but again, it gets the job done, it's fine. It, it does have uh, aux, uh, sorry, um, aux ports for sound and uh, microphone and some USB ports, but for us, for test benches, we don't need any of that stuff. We just need the case to hold like some, it just needs to hold it basically and look good. Um, so this broke on us um, a little bit ago. Uh, we weren't using it very much, but I think someone bumped it or kicked it or something. on the, uh, Anyway, it, it, I'm not saying that it was built crappy and, and maybe it was, but um, we broke it. I think it was our fault that it broke, but it broke and we threw it away. Um, here's the Leon Lee PC-T70X. This looks really, really nice. I like how this looks. Um, it. I don't like the back plate area where the video cards mount onto. That's really bulky, and for what we would, if we were doing video card testing, that would get in the way. Um, so it's and it's not terrible. But I just personally like it to be free space on the back for video card testing. And uh, putting a motherboard in and out constantly, um, like we'll be doing on the, the, uh, the <laughs> sorry for uh, stuttering here, but the testing we'll be doing, the reviews we'll be doing of those low end AM4 processors, um, we'll be putting motherboards in and out, in and out, and that backplate would just make things more of a headache for us. That might be removable. So there's no reviews on here. There's not a lot of information on this. So um, yeah. Let's go off. It, it looks good though, and it's but it's a hundred bucks. It's more expensive than everything else. And then this is probably, if I had to guess based on the reviews, the number of reviews, this is probably the most popular test bench out there right now. This is made by a company called High Speed PC, and it's called the Half Deck Tech Station. Um, this is seventy-five bucks with free shipping, so it's about five bucks more than the Cooler Master one that we're talking about. But you can also see that this in this picture right here, this ships flat just like those DIY PCs. Uh, which makes sense because what the companies here are trying to do is save money on shipping. The box that this would ship in would be significantly smaller than that Cooler Master box we saw earlier that this uh, test bench, the Cooler Master test bench ships in. So it, they save probably five bucks on shipping, which goes right straight to their bottom line because almost everyone sells everything with free shipping. Um, I think that this picture that they show with it built with this, the whole system put together with that fan on the side makes it look kind of cool and aggressive. Um, but based on this picture of how it comes shipped, it actually to me looks really cheap. Um, I think that the materials used are probably pretty cheap. And you know, it's a bunch of plastic and particle board and a fan that probably costs 25 cents. So yeah, I'm being critical, but um, I think the Cooler Master is the best bang for the buck here. Um, I think the Leon Lee looks awesome, but there's not very much information um, and We'll be using the Cooler Master test benches as much as we can for everything we want to do now from here on out. Um, anyway, so I'm going to uh, let's switch the camera back around so I can talk to you guys again. Uh, so I appreciate the time watching the video. Uh, we are expecting to continue to bring a lot more content to YouTube over the next indefinite future. Um, we're hoping to do at least one video a day with maybe some days with more like five video reviews. A lot of unboxing, um, motherboards, video card systems, processors, SSDs. Um, we'll probably be doing things like full series of, you know, Z170 boards, Z270 boards, X38, uh, X370 boards, things like that. So there'll be albums of reviews of different motherboards and video cards and things like that. So um, stay tuned. Uh, do us a favor. If you like the video, hit the like button. Self-explanatory, right? Um, if you want to see more of our reviews and our unboxings that will be coming, hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you hit the bell button, you'll also receive uh, an email every time so you can take a look right away. Um, we, we appreciate your support and uh, thanks for sticking through the whole video. Thank you.